What's up, guys? It's your boy Benny. Hey, just a second here. I need to do a quick call. 911. Yeah, hey, officer, I'd like to report a murder. Nope, nope, not at uh, the federal lockup with Hillary Clinton. No, no, not at Barack Obama's mansion in Martha's Vineyard. No, 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 we're talking about a murder that happened live on CNN. Yeah, yeah, gonna need you to go right now. It's a bloodbath. Ladies and gentlemen, last night on CNN, Vivek Ron Swamy was asked about January 6th, saying it was an inside job by the feds and hot damn, did it go down. Ladies and gentlemen, Vivek Ron Swamy, quickly becoming one of the most important voices in America, says Brandon Straka. I could watch Vivek Ron Swamy throwing facts on CNN over and over again. Vivek Ron Swamy shuts down CNN. Abby Phillips, she tries to interrupt him for three minutes straight while he calls out the government for framing January Sixers. And on the uh, the establishment does not approve this message. And on why didn't CNN allow Vivek to sw- speak and immediately cut him off when he suggested that there have been so many federal agents at the Capitol ground. And on CNN won't let up on January 6th. Ladies and gentlemen, Tim Cass saying this is flames. What happened yesterday and what was the setup? The setup was that during the last debate, Vivek Ranswamy said that January 6th was an inside job. Have a listen. Three of my other colleagues on this debate stage is all three of them have been licking Donald Trump's boots for years for money and endorsements. Ron DeSantis, you've been a great governor, but you would have never been one without actually begging Donald Trump for that endorsement. And you attacked him in your book a year ago. Same thing with Chris Christie as a lobbyist, begging them for COVID money for his special interests in New Jersey, prepping him for the debates last time around. These people are now Monday morning quarterbacking some decision he made. I think the real enemy is not Donald Trump. It's not even Joe Biden. It is the deep state that at least Donald Trump attempted to take on. And if you want somebody who's going to speak truth to power, then vote for somebody who's going to speak the truth to you. Why am I the only person on the stage, at least, who can say that January 6th now does look like it was an inside job? That the government lied to us for 20 years about Saudi Arabia. Listen to that applause line. Okay, so. On stage during a CNN town hall, Vivek was asked, yo, uh, what do you think about January 6th? Vivek Ramaswamy spars with Abby Phillips over January 6th at town hall. Now, here we go. The thing that CNN will not allow is truth on their network. And so they interrupted Vivek every time he tried to make a point. Nonetheless, he defeated soundly Abby Phillips, even while she was screaming, crying, seething, and sniping at him. Watch this. Yeah. About something that you said at the debate last week, you used the phrase inside job to describe what happened on January 6th. The next day, Capitol rioter Alan Hosteller uh, highlighted your comments at his sentencing. Uh, he is going to prison uh, for 11 years. Ho- Ho- Hosteller uh, threatened members of Congress. That? How embarrassing that you're like reading this question off a note card. Like, do you not? There's no, no I see no note cards for Vivek. You have to sit there and like have your giant prompts. How unbelievably unprepared, unprofessional, and unimpressive these people he are. brought a hatchet, knives, pepper spray, stun batons, tactical gear to the U.S. Capitol. Are you concerned that a convicted felon like that is now promoting your comments in court? So here's my concern, Abby. And I want to tell you guys where I'm at. If you had told me it's close to three years ago that January 6, 2021 happened. If you had told me three years ago, back when I was a biotech CEO, not steeped in this world, I was just consuming passive media, but was focused on my world of developing medicines. If you had told me that January 6 was in any way an inside job, the subject of government entrapment, I would have told you that was crazy talk. Fringe conspiracy theory nonsense. I can tell you now, having gone somewhat deep in this, it's not. I mean, the reality is this. We do have a government, first of all, we have to acknowledge that has lied to us systematically over the last several years about the origin of COVID-19, about the Hunter Biden laptop that we were told was false by 51 CIA experts and otherwise before we now know that it was true. You can go straight down the list, the Trump-Russia disinformation collusion hoax, all of it. Now we come to January 6th. The reality is we know that there were federal law enforcement agents in that field. We don't know how many. I think it's Mr. shameful. Ramos, if, if I may finish just answering, well, let me just. Is, is really I, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and interrupt you here because because you're I know this, that there the establishment were, doesn't approve of this you're message. Saying I know that this, there were federal but we agents. Be able to talk about this. You're saying that there were federal this is, agents. This is important to talk about. You are saying important. there were federal agents in the pad on on, yes. on January 6th. Yep. 
There is no evidence that there were federal agents in the crowd on January so, 6th. So why, before Congress, when pressed on what the number was, they didn't say there were none. They just couldn't so say how many there were. So you're saying that there is no, that you have not seen evi any evidence so that we've there seen were, multiple, and so you We've seen multiple informants suggesting that there were. We know people were, we know people were FBI informants who were asking Is there this. any evidence? May, may, may I just, may I just there, finish this me, and well, you can me, come back and question me? Well, let me clarify. I know it's very uncomfortable for you. I'm going to clarify my question I know this is an uncomfortable issue for many people, but we have to do the truth here. I'm going to clarify my question because I want to make sure that you understand what I'm asking. I understand this deeply. And I told you, I was where working three years the, ago. I'm where not there now. Where is the evidence? Yes. Where is the evidence that the government had a plot, so let's do this. an inside I, job, but no, no, I'm going to tell you what inside job is because I'm not going to, I'm not violent respect, on January 6th. Where I'm not going to let you put words in my that? mouth. I'm going to put my words in my mouth. And I'm going to tell you what, what I mean by that. Where is the evidence that the government was involved Entrapment. in planning or executing okay. January 6th? Where so I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you hard facts. And, and if I may, Abby, I know this is going to be a little uncomfortable. But we're gonna we're, we're gonna go through this, and you can and you can you can push Just back on it. Just waiting for the that. evidence, and you can push back on that. And let's do this fairly. Why did they suppress footage of now what's been released? Two hundred hours of footage of shooting rubber bullets into that crowd, shooting tear gas into that crowd. You didn't see that before. You saw what the response was to that. Uh, now you see footage coming out of actually rolling out the red carpet. For Capitol Mr. Police allowing Mr. people in, again, right through the front the door. The vast majority I mean, of that footage, video evidence should have been released shows, before, Abby. Mr. Ramaswamy, the vast majority been of the before. footage shows and my deeper police question officers is this. I have to stop here. My blood is boiling. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I haven't had my coffee yet this morning. I have to stop here and just show you this should have been the response. There's undercover body camera footage from federal police force. This is uh, the Metropolitan Police Department here in the federal city of Washington, D.C. So this is the feds saying that people need to go, go, go into the Capitol. Help them up. Help them up. Help them get into the building. This is the footage. This is the evidence. All right. Love, uh, I love Vivek. This is the evidence. CNN's never played you this evidence. This evidence was revealed in court after the government was sued. An undercover officer encouraging vi uh, violent and illegal behavior, or at the very least, the kind of behavior that they prosecuted people for. That's why Nancy Pelosi said, I've been waiting for this, trespassing at the Capitol. Okay, anyway, back to it. Over and, and I want to talk about one more thing. This is really important. Riders. That's yeah, I'm going to give you, hard, I'm gonna give you some hard facts. Of it shows. So what, here's what entrapment is. Cherry no, no, pick. I'm not cherry picking. You if cannot, I may finish, Abby. Cannot if cherry I may finish, pick Abby. I'm not cherry picking. Examples. To, to the contrary. To the country, you know who cherry picked? You know who cherry picked? The government. That, that is what happened. The government cherry picked 12 hours of footage when there was 200 hours of footage. The cherry picking was the government, not me. Release so, the whole thing. And let me let me just finish one thing too, because this is super important as a topic. So when you, I when, think there's a civil libertarian issue of our time. When we Gretchen talking, Whitmer's kidnapping. I want to keep. I want to be really clear on this, because it's the same issue in the same FBI, same even part of the FBI. Three people who were in an alleged plot to kidnap Gretchen Whitmer were acquitted at the end of trial because it was entrapment. That is, government agents put them up to do something they otherwise wouldn't have done. They gave them credit cards with spending limits of up to $5,000, encouraged them to buy munitions, plan something they weren't otherwise willing to plan. So much so, and I want people at home to know this, especially CNN viewers to know this, is that one of the jurors went to those defendants and apologized afterwards, gave him a hug, apologized, seeing what the government had put a poor guy up to who had to go to some Mexican restaurant across the street to get hot water. These people were exploited with credit cards up to $5,000, FBI agents putting them up to a kidnapping plot that we were told was true but was entrapment. 14, Same thing with the Capitol Police, people Mr. letting Ramaswamy, them in freely. Many of those people Mr. then Mr. being Ramaswamy, charged. Ramaswamy, look, the government cannot I, put you up I to do something and then Mr. charge Ramaswamy, you for Ramaswamy, it. Look, That's wrong. I don't want to have to. To the, to the left I don't, the right, I don't, don't want to have to. I don't want to have to interrupt you. I really don't. But I don't want you to mislead the audience here or I'm at not. home. Uh, I don't want to have to interrupt you. Mainstream media. I don't want to have to interrupt you, but I will interrupt you. How about this clip of Nancy Pelosi saying it was an inside job? That that one of the um, d debaters said it was an inside job was. is an inside job on the part of Donald Trump and his henchmen in the Congress of the United States. <laughs> they don't know what to do now that all their lies are coming collapsing down. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we asked Tucker Carlson on a recent space about his reporting from January 6th. He was the first guy through the wall to break the narrative on this. Tucker Carlson saying it become it became obvious to him that there was the preponderance of data to show that there were federal agents inside of the audience.
the inability of our federal law enforcement officials to answer simple questions about this. And of course, the people who were in charge that day, Stephen Sund of the Capitol Hill Police, saying, yeah, the place was teeming with federal agents. Why did the people who were breaking window? Why, why were the, why did people have earpieces in the breach teams? Who, who were on those earpieces? Somebody explain that. Somebody, please, calmly, quietly, and quickly explain that to me. Ladies and gentlemen, Tucker Carlson, take us away. Tucker, you were the first one out through the wall with tapes that had not been seen of January 6th. If you're speaking about government lies and you're speaking about half-truths or, or, or total fabrications told by the government, it seems like you are utterly vindicated now in your reporting based on the preponderance of evidence. I mean, I know I see that Jacob Chansley is listening in to this, to this live. Uh, a good example of that is you completely retold the story of Jacob Chansley, right? Known as the MAGA shaman, Buffalo horn guy, right? You completely flipped the script, broke the narrative on that. Your thoughts on, as the man with the first access, the first reporter to see the January 6th tapes, uh, what are your thoughts on the leaks that have been coming out now? Well, first, I loved your interview with Chansley, who is just, you know, the people they tell us are the worst are, are often some of the sweetest and the best. And he's definitely in that category based on your interview with him, I thought. Um, so thank you for that. But because uh, everything is a total inversion, our heroes are actually like the worst people and the most reviled are actually the kindest, of course. Um, but yeah, I mean, I guess I feel vindicated. I've taken no pleasure in that. I, it's interesting, though. It wasn't reporting that got me to that. It was instinct. I mean, and, and I will say my instincts, and I think all of our instincts are undefeated. Your instincts don't lie to you. Your instincts are not trying to sell you a product or spin you. Your instincts are only there to tell you the truth. So if you pay close attention to them and if you figure out a system for you know, pointing you in the right direction, and my system is really simple, whatever they're hysterical about, is something they're lying about because why are they hysterical? I mean, if I'm not lying, I'm not hysterical. Why would I be hysterical? I've got nothing to hide. Like you don't believe you don't believe me. Okay, fine. I'm telling the truth. But if I start screaming at you and calling you a Nazi, when you ask me a question, I'm probably hiding something. And that was the guide I used on the COVID vaccine. And on January 6th, I, I had no reason to believe there was anything weird about January 6th. I wasn't paying very close attention to be honest with you. And then within hours, they were telling me it was a white supremacist insurrection. And like, that's the one thing I knew that it wasn't. And so I was like, well, why are they telling me that? And then they kept telling me that it wasn't just a momentary surge of hysteria. It was a, it was a narrative they were creating. And then I was like, oh, wow, you're hiding something really, really dark. And it turned out to be hundreds of federal agents in disguise in the crowd. And of course, it was a setup just as I began to suspect it was. And but anyway, th that's how I got there. I was the only reporter to see those tapes because I was the only really one of the, the few who was interested. I mean, we asked. That's kind of how we got them. Just ask, like, call the new speaker like you have these tapes thousands of hours. Why can't we see them? And of course, they didn't want to give them up, but they did. And they showed kind of what you suspected. You know, there were vandals outside. Um, people broke windows. I'm opposed to that. People, you know, it's a big crowd. They pushed in. Some of them, you know, did violent things, pretty low grade, by the way, violence, but whatever they did, bad, won't defend it. But most of them were just like, holy shit, I can't believe I'm in the Capitol. And they wandered around. And then the cops led them in to various rooms within the Capitol, including the Senate chamber. Now, that was the point at which, and it's on video, they, they open the door for Chansley. They show him where it is and let him in. And then he says to one of the cops, like, can I say a prayer for you? And I'm like, this is so different from everything I've been told that it's bewildering. And moreover, why are they letting him into the Senate chamber? Why wouldn't they say, hey, pal, you can't be here. Like, you know, scoot, get out of here. You get arrested, which is what cops would do. But no, they let him, they led him there. And then I'm like, well, I'd like to talk to those cops. But of course you can't because you're not allowed to know anything because it's a national security matter. And then I was like, this looks very much like a setup to me. I mean, what else is it? And of course, the second I said that or suggested, I didn't even say it, I suggested it. A bunch of people from on-air people I worked with quit in outrage, moral outrage. They were just so shocked. Uh, that Jonah kid and that dumb guy was his partner or whatever, Hayes. And they're like, oh, we just can't. This is so unbearable, you know. And it was like, why are you so mad that I suggested that? Like, if, if you disagree, tell me why. We can have a reasonable. No, no, no. We're quitting because it's a moral crime that you ask the question. As soon as people say it's a moral crime for you to ask a question, any question about anything, then you know they're the ones committing the moral crime, 100% of the time.
So yeah, that was my guide. And yeah, of course, you know, it turned out to be true. 